Your ass is in my face and I'm just looking right at your ass. Snowball is hot? Um, yeah it is. Stop looking at my snowball. Oh. Alright. <laughs> All right, guys, so we finally hit the 5K subscribers milestone. So for that, we're doing a Q&A, which we posted questions on YouTube and Instagram. We said, ask us anything, literally anything. And some of you wanted to know a lot of gaming related questions. Some of you wanted to know personal questions and some of you really wanted to get personal. So let's get into it. Do you want tips on gameplay? Yes. yes. We do appreciate the tips, even though we don't listen all the time. Yeah, we don't consider it backseat gaming. You don't know what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know sometimes. So we actually love it. It helps us enjoy the games and, you know, keep them coming. What is your favorite game? My favorite game, I would have to go with Mass Effect. If I have to pick like one of the Mass Effect games, I'll go with Mass Effect 2. Honorary mention though, I do have to say Legend of Dragoon. I love that game. Mine is The Last of Us 2 because of how it made me feel, even though it wasn't good at times, but I've never had a video game that just took me through this roller coaster of emotions and it was just so intense. I've only felt like that with shows or movies that are really well done. I've never with a video game and this one did it. This one really did it. Was there a game that you were too scared to finish? No. You know, kind of. So my first job that I had was I worked at GameStop and the guys convinced me that I had to try the Bioshock demo and I had nightmares, I still have nightmares, about the woman that's rocking a gun in the cradle. Wait, this is happening before at none. Why are you here? It freaked me out so bad that I was not able to play the game for years, but eventually I did pick it up and beat it, and it's one of my top games to this day, but I almost didn't play it because it was really scary. <laughs> if you could be any character from any video game, who would you both be and why? Ellie from The Last of Us, because... It's a motherfucking dinosaur! I would be Spyro because it would be so easy to make s'mores if I was a dragon. Follow up question, which character is the best representative of your personalities? I am going to go with Wheatley from Portal 2. Don't worry, I'm absolutely guaranteeing you 100% that it's this way. No, it's not this way. Ah! Big, 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 big. I'm gonna go with Claire from Resident Evil 2 because she swears a lot. Son of a bitch! You bastard! You asshole! What video game character would you leave each other for? Chloe. Chloe. So have you gotten over the bunny death in The Last of Us yet? Oh, it's so cute! Oh! My God. oh! What? Why? No! And let me explain to you why I am not over it and never will be over it! It was unnecessary. You cannot get that much food off of a bunny, so there was no point to it. And it was adorable and it didn't deserve to die, okay? Like, of all of the deaths in all of the games that we have done on this channel so far, and, you know, I, I know that, you know, there are some very pleasant and wonderful and charming people that we've lost along the way, but the bunny did not need to die. So no, I'm not over it. <laughs> She's really not over it. <laughs> Are you guys gonna react to The Last of Us HBO show? Yes, we plan to. We can't wait until it comes out. We're really excited that they're they're making it. As a matter of fact, we are thinking about reacting into movies and TV series in general. Comment below if there's something you'd be interested in us watching. Are you guys planning on collaborating with other gaming channels in the future? It's complicated. So see, normally how the internet works is you have the internet and it goes to the ISP and it goes to your modem. But because we live so far out in the middle of nowhere, it goes from the internet to the ISP to a crow that gets eaten by an eagle that shits on a cow that has to burp in the general direction of a passing horse. And then the horse has to talk to the goat and the goat has to get milked. And then the milk gets drunk by a cat. And then the cat comes here because this is where all cats go, and that's how we get our internet. And all of this results in a general internet upload speed of 
Where do you see these Resident Evil streams ending? I want y'all to play them all. So I love the Resident Evil series. I am a big fan and I don't know where it will end. Maybe eventually we will play them all, uh, but we, we will take breaks. Like not all back to back to back to back. What game are you most looking forward to? Well, the next game that I'm looking forward to is Far Cry 6. That one hopefully comes out this year. I think it's scheduled to come out this year, but everything else is... <sighs> I think mine is still Horizon, even though it's been delayed. Like, I, I love me some robot dinosaurs, man. All right, let's get personal. Tiffany, what's your favorite food and why? Pizza, because I never get tired of eating pizza. I worked at a pizza place for four years and I ate pizza every single day because I was broke and we didn't throw away the leftovers like we took them home or we just ate them and it was free food and why not and I still didn't get tired of it. My favorite food, I'm going to go with the humble potato because the potato can be whatever you need in your life at that moment. It can be a chip, it can be a tot, it can be a fry, it can be mashed, it can be baked, it can be scalloped, it can be vodka. Whatever you need, the potato can provide. All hail the high holy potato. Food that one of you likes and the other one dislikes. Shrimp. Yeah, so she's the kind of person that will go to a seafood restaurant and she'll order a chicken sandwich. I don't do fish. She also doesn't eat french fries. Yeah, I don't like french fries. I know, I just talked about the humble potato, but I don't actually like french fries. However, <laughs> there are certain homemade fries, but the vast majority of french fries are... <laughs> you cannot taste the potato, you only taste the cooking oil. I don't like tomato soup and peanut butter and jelly. I don't eat them together. Together, separate, or in the trash, all bad. Well, yeah, it's bad if it's in the trash because that means you didn't get to eat it! Movies or series? Series. series. Mayonnaise? Hellman's. Rio mayonnaise. How many cats do you have? Four too many. There's Buddy, Joy, Wasabi, and Chinguanino. How is it living with a cat? It's like never having your own space. You're just you know, you're working on something or you're home and you have this little thing that just takes over your space. If you're working on the computer, they'll go, you know, on the laptop, they'll go and just sit right on it. If you're folding laundry, they'll go and sit right on the laundry. You'll be doing something, you'll be busy or, you know, recording and they just, they just get in the way. They don't pay rent, they don't pay for their own food, they don't even clean their own shit. <laughs> but then they do something so cute that you forgive them for everything they do that's awful. All they have to do <laughs> is just look at you with those eyes. You just can't, you just can't just, just help but to love them. <laughs> do you like Maroon 5? Yes. yes. Sugar! Yes, please! Would you come and put it down on me? Have you been to any festival or do you have a favorite concert? Yes, Evanescence. I love that band. It is one of my favorite bands. And years ago, quite a bit ago, I got to go to one of their concerts and that was, it was, it was awesome. I'm more of a Broadway show tunes type of person. So my favorite Broadway musical would be The Lion King. What is your favorite song? I want to swing from the chandelier, chandelier. So now we're getting really personal and this one is one of the most commonly asked questions. Are you guys sisters, roommates, friends? A lady and her handmaid. We're actually a couple. We are engaged. We've been together for four years now. Which is a long time. In the lesbian world, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that's the equivalent of celebrating our golden anniversary. I'm kidding, there are a lot of uh, happy couples that have been together forever. <laughs> How did you two meet? At a strip club, and I was the stripper. Actually. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it just sounded more interesting than our actually meetup story. Our story is pretty interesting. <laughs> it was a dark, 
dark and stormy night in 2017. When in the middle of a hurricane, the power went out. And only by continually plugging our phones into a generator could we log on to our local dating site and try to find girls online. And we found each other. And then we had to wait a week before we had power again so we could take a shower and not kill each other on the first date. Kill each other? I smelled that bad. How do your parents react to you coming out? My parents were pretty good, especially considering that I told my mom by screaming at her at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay, let's rewind here. So I came out at 27 because it took me that long to figure things out. I know, I know, I know, and it's a long story. Maybe I'll do it in another video sometime to tell you the kind of why, what happened, whatever, but basically, age 27, I figured out, oh my god, I have been doing my entire life wrong, I am gay. I was in a full-blown panic, and I'm helping my mom with a work project that's due the next day, and I am dealing with the fact that I have a crush on this girl, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing, and mom's like, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting so weird? And I scream at her that I have a crush on a girl at the theater, and I don't know what to do. And my mom just looks at me, and she's like, do we have to deal with this right now? <laughs> and, and you know, it was an adjustment for everybody, I think. But for the most part, my parents were just more surprised. And then they were fine. Even my grandma, I, when I told her, she was just tickled to welcome Tiffany into the family and even got her Christmas presents and it was a whole thing. So I was pretty lucky. How about you? How did your family take it? Well. I didn't really tell my mom, she she found out. And this happened back when I was in high school. And when I was in high school, we didn't have cell phones yet uh, to text back and forward. So the way we would message each, each other was through, uh, through like letters. So in the classroom, I would uh, write a note to my friend and pass the little paper, fold it, just when the teacher wasn't looking, just pass it and then she would write back and then she would pass it to me and we would have this whole conversation, kind of like text message but in a paper. This one day we had this full-blown conversation where I completely opened up to my best friend at the time. So in this personal conversation we had going in the middle of history class, we were more talking about my history with feelings and my sexuality. I was very detailed to my friends, telling her everything. Like I opened up everything about how I like girls, like how I felt, even some like sexual desires in there. I mean, it was like telling my friend like everything that was going on. Then, you know, whatever, I kind of forgot about that letter, put it in a notebook and days later, weeks later, I don't know, I cannot remember what triggered this, but I pissed off my mom somehow. And my mom was not the kind of person that really went through my stuff. Like I could have stuff in my backpack, she would never find out, she would never like look through my stuff. But I did something really bad because it caused her to get my backpack, turn it upside down, and all the notebooks and everything just fell. And out of one of the notebooks, this little paper, whoops, sleeps out, falls into the floor by itself, just calling the attention to itself. And I looked at the little piece of paper that fell on the floor and I realized that that is the paper that has the conversation that says everything. And then my mom looks straight at it. And I'm like, oh shit. So she goes and picks it up. Now, if you watch movies and shows before, you know when, when something is about to get really intense, it starts moving in slow motion and it just kind of intensifies the moment? That happens in real life. Everything turned into slow motion for me. And just I just saw my mom, I'm just watching my mom in slow motion, pick this little paper up and just opening up. And then she starts reading it and I start sweating and shaking and I can see her eyes just going back and forth, just reading and reading and reading. I can start seeing her face turn into horrified. Imagine being the author of Fifty Shades of Grey and then having your mom read it and having to watch her read it. That is exactly what was happening here as she's reading this letter and I'm just like, <sighs> and after she was done, she slams the paper down and she looks at me and she's like, what is this? A piece of paper? <laughs> no shit. 
What is on this piece of paper? A conversation with my friend. Can you explain this to me? I like girls. And she just, there's like this moment of stare and I don't know at this point what's going to happen to me. I've pissed off my mom in every single way at this point in, in life because I was, I was just a terrible teenager. But this was a new one and I just didn't know how she was going to react. Then she starts asking more questions. She's like, what do you mean you like girls? And I'm just here like, I don't know how else to explain it other than I like girls. So I'm like, I, I, I'm a lesbian. So I just, you know, I just gotta change the answer. She follows up with, what do you mean? So then I finally like, I just break down and I start crying and I'm like, okay. So I start telling her my feelings and I said, I started telling her how I felt since when I, I felt like I like girls and that I've been hiding this and you know, I came out to my friends and you know, I was afraid to tell her. And I just go to my mom and I start crying on her lap. Like I just, just go on her lap and she hugs me at that moment. I, I like, I, I felt safe. Like she hugged me and she, she, you know, she like pat me and it was such a moment of comfort that I'm like, okay, this is not as bad. You know, she didn't push me away or anything. I wasn't sure what to expect. I felt like a huge weight came off my shoulders that I was out. I didn't have to hide it anymore. The next morning she made breakfast and I go and sit down, start having breakfast. She's like, I made you an appointment with a psychologist. You think I'm crazy? And then she follows up by saying, yes, and the next day you have an appointment with a pastor at the church. But anyways, she got over it. Eventually she accepted me the way I am. She loves me. She loves Tony. Her and Tony make cookies together. They make cakes together. And every time I go visit my mom and I don't bring Tony, she's like, why didn't you bring Tony? So everything's good now, <laughs> but it was rough. All right, guys, that resumes all the questions, so comment below what else you want to know. Cause we want to know what you want to know. Let's get a conversation going, yo.